When the OnePlus Open was finally released almost six full months ago, we all watched as this device was pretty much instantly catapulted to the top of almost everyone's rankings of foldable phones. It was praised almost across the entire board, hardware, software, on and on. This thing was seen as a massive accomplishment for OnePlus. It won a lot of awards, and like I said, it was pretty well regarded as probably the best foldable available. Now, unfortunately, since then, most big reviewers, most big channels and websites have moved on to the next big thing. The reviews come out, they talk about it, and then they're off to whatever is, uh, you know, the new thing to be concerned about. But for me, six months have gone by now, and I think it's really important to check back in and see where this device is now. It's always said you should never buy a device for what it's going to be. You should buy it for what it is right now. But that is not to say devices don't evolve over time. And of course, the OnePlus Open has changed in some ways over time. And I think more than anything, it's just important to see how is this device holding up. So six months later, let's review the OnePlus Open again. And I think it makes a lot of sense to start off by talking about the hardware of the device because that's one of the first things that's going to actually start to like show wear and tear. Now, as you can see, my device really doesn't have a whole lot of wear and tear to talk about. Mine has that faux leather finish, and it looks pretty much exactly the same as it looked on the day that I got it. Now, I do have a screen protector or I guess a glass protector on my camera bump back here, but I can tell you underneath that... I had no issues, there were no scratches, no problems if you were worried about that, you know, a camera sticking so far out, taking damage. Mine has not really seen or had any issues. If we look at the hinge, I don't see anything of note there either. It looks like it has held up just fine. And if we turn around here to the cover display, it did come with a plastic screen protector, but... I removed it. It was super, super scratched up, so I peeled that thing off, and I actually had a glass protector on here that came with this one, but user error, it had some problems, so I ended up taking it back off, so I have no screen protector on here at the moment, but again, there's been a protector on it for the most part, and there are no scratches that I can see. There's some lint and so forth on there, but the screen itself looks like it has held up really, really well. From the closed perspective, you could absolutely be convinced that this thing is a brand new device. It has held up exceptionally well. Let's take a look, though, at the part of the device, the part of the hardware that I think most people would be the most interested to hear about and the most concerned about, this internal screen. And I want to draw your attention, first and foremost, to that crease. To my eye, it really doesn't look all that different from how it did the day that I got it. It doesn't feel all that different from the day that I got it. It's very difficult to feel when compared to the creases on other foldable screens. And unless there's light directly hitting it, you really just can't see it. If it's sitting down like this, can you tell me where that crease is? Well, of course you can because you know where the edges are, but you know what I mean. In terms of scratches, you can see right there perhaps, right next to my thumb, that is where I tend to scroll and do things with my right hand, and there are tons of little micro scratches. This is par for the course on pretty much every foldable that I've ever had. The good news is that's on the pre-installed screen protector, not the device itself. And the other good news is, unless you're doing what I'm doing and you're putting the light in just the correct spot, you're never ever going to see that. And with the screen on, you're 100% never ever going to see that. This screen has held up really, really quite well also. And I love the fact, still to this day, I love the fact that this screen has an almost matte finish to it. It makes it look so much better than pretty much any other screen that I've used. If we compare that to the Pixel Fold, one of my favorite devices of all time, note how much glossier that screen is, how much more visible that crease is, and if I sort of just set these two next to each other, I think it becomes apparent really quickly how much more viewable this screen is than this one is because of this matte finish versus the glossy finish. Let's bring a lamp over here and look at that. Look how much more clear the lamp's reflection is on the Pixel Fold versus on the OnePlus Open. It makes a really, really big difference. It's one of my favorite things about the OnePlus Open. 
it's one of those things that's always hard to capture on a camera but we are outside in uh you know pretty much direct sunlight right now and again hard to capture on a camera but to me to my eye this would be absolutely still usable is it perfect no but compared to some other devices in this much sunlight i think it's handling it really quite well and part of that is because the screen is relatively bright but the other part is because of that kind of somewhat matte finish you don't have all the reflections the glare the gloss that you have on some other devices Something else I love is the fact that you have face unlock actually on the inner screen as well. The Pixel Fold does not do that. It's weird. It's annoying. Even though that volume and power button, if I don't focus, they're way too high. I don't know why they put the volume rocker up that high. The power button is in a decent spot. It's quick. Fingerprint scanner is built in. That stuff is okay, but I do, like I said, I love the fact that face unlock is functional on the inner screen as well as the outer. I would also be remiss when I talk about the Open if I didn't mention the weight of this device. It's still being right around that 240 gram mark if I'm not mistaken. It's just awesome. The fact that it weighs basically what a normal phone weighs, a normal flagship phone, it does make it uh, an absolute joy to use and it's something that I do wish even though it doesn't bother me a ton, I do wish that the Pixel Fold was a little bit lighter. That remains a big advantage for the OnePlus Open, even if for my money it's a little bit taller than I would like for it to be. I do find myself needing to use that one-handed mode a little bit more often than I would like to. But overall, the hardware has held up really, really well. This thing is quite tanky. If I stick with the hardware thing just for a moment longer though, I do also want to point out the speakers on this thing. It has one of the best sets of speakers on any device I have used. Now, if you look at it, you would be pretty well justified in thinking there's one, two, three, four speakers. But in fact, there are only three. One of these, I believe it's that one, is there for symmetry and aesthetics only. There are actually three functioning speakers, but that's more than most phones have, right? That's one more than most phones have. And the result is this thing has awesome speakers. They are absolutely room filling. You may know that with this device, once you get to about here, it kind of just wants to flop open the rest of the way. And when it was brand new, that flopping motion was, I think, a little bit more energetic than it is now but it kind of reached the point that it's at now and it has just sort of stayed there i do also want to point out that when you open it you can see they're just naturally opening it that is how flat or not flat mine is if i give it a little bit more pressure it is going to be a little bit closer to fully flat but like all foldable devices that kind of thing is going to happen i think you can make a pretty strong argument that for a lot of us the OnePlus Open has the best overall total hardware package. Keep in mind, I have used mine the entire time just like this. No case at all, and that is how well this thing has held up. Pretty impressive. Now, for most people, when you look at the OnePlus Open, the thing that's going to stand out the most to you immediately is probably going to be that absolutely massive camera bump on the back of the device. OnePlus managed to squeeze in some really top-end camera hardware into a device that is extremely thin, and in order to do that, guess what? You're going to have a pretty sizable camera bump, and they leaned into it. They just went ahead and made a big old circle back there, and that's where your camera hardware is. To me, it's one of those things that it's worth it if the camera output is good. And luckily for the OnePlus Open, the camera output is good, and it's actually improved over time. Let's take a look at my Google Photos account, where I have simply searched OnePlus Open, and we're going to pick out a handful of photos and kind of analyze them and talk about where things have improved. And I guess just overall, what's that photography experience like? Normally, I would start with like normal photography, go through all the different camera lenses, and then probably close off with portrait mode. But for this, we're not going to do that. We're just going to kind of bounce around a little bit. And I'm going to pull up pictures that catch my eye. Look at this portrait I took of my dog, Rose. Now, this has had a little bit of editing done to it, but not 
a ton necessarily, mostly just some color grading stuff. This was taken with the 3X telephoto zoom. Look how nice that Hasselblad style blur looks. The detail in her fur, I think looks really good as well. This camera consistently pumps out some of my favorite portrait mode photos I have ever taken. And then if you do use that main sensor and take a picture of something up close like this, this is not portrait mode. This is just natural bokeh because of the sensor, because of the aperture. And I think that it looks really nice as well. We have that depth of field, the focus falling off really, really naturally and really rapidly. Of course, it's naturally because, again, it's not simulated. It's real. Here's a good one I took. I believe this was also using that 3X telephoto. Love how it captures the lighting here shining through without overexposing anything. Look at the detail. That 3X telephoto zoom, which is super high resolution, which means you can punch it in all the way to 6X without really losing any detail at all. The writing on my gutter is even like readable. You can see the texture on the railing up here, the individual strands of fur. Really, really impressive. The telephoto, like I said on this thing, it is absolutely excellent. I think you can make a really strong argument that in terms of all three cameras, all three sensors, the primary, the ultra wide, and the telephoto, that the OnePlus Open has the strongest overall camera setup of any of the foldables that are currently available in the United States. So the Z Fold 5, the Pixel Fold, and the OnePlus Open. All three of those cameras are absolutely excellent. There really isn't a weak spot on any of them. With the other foldable devices, you can say with the Z Fold, that telephoto's not that great. With the Pixel Fold, you can say the ultra wide isn't really that great. With the OnePlus Open, all three cameras are absolutely stellar. And the only place where I feel like they kind of drag a little bit behind is in low light where the shutter speed is a bit slower than it ought to be. But they have, with recent updates, improved that a little bit as well. I've talked about in prior videos about how their color profile was a little bit too warm, I think, for me. But over time, they've also addressed that a little bit as well. So overall, for me, the OnePlus Open is probably the closest that we have to a true flagship camera setup on one of these foldable devices. And in terms of video shooting 4K and 30 FPS, guys, I've used this camera multiple times for shooting B-roll on this channel, substituting my S23 Ultra and no one has noticed, no one has said a thing. It does a really, really nice job on video as well. When it comes to this device though, the weakest part for me, the shakiest part, is going to be in the overall software experience. Now don't get me wrong, it's not bad, but when you compare it to what Samsung and Google are doing, there are just, for me, a few more sort of shaky areas than I would like to see. And I can kind of show you a few of these really quickly before we go over some of the more positive things as well. And some of these are gonna be really minor, things that maybe you're never gonna notice, things that you're probably maybe not going to care about, but they're things that I'm going to communicate with you just so that we are clear. So the first one is something I've actually talked about a whole bunch of times, and it's just sort of annoying. I don't know why this is taking so long to get fixed, and that's kind of gonna be maybe the story of this part of this video. So if you're going to do a custom icon, I actually like that you can do this, right? You can go and set a custom icon pack in the stock launcher, but you can also edit an individual icon. And that's really, really cool, right? Here are some packs I have installed and I'm gonna look for an icon that I wanna use for this application. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. And at a certain point, what's going to happen is I'm going to get to a point where it's just not gonna show me any more of these icons. And there are thousands of icons in this icon pack, but I can't see any more than what I've just shown you. There also needs to be a search function there as well to look for certain icons because that would be untenable to just scroll through them. This bug has existed since it was released. It is still here. That is a little bit on the frustrating side, let's say. Another bug that I've noticed is with your accent colors, which you can see here, if we go into our settings, under wallpaper and style, you can set these colors. Mine are set to custom right now, but what happens 
sometimes is I'll have my accent colors set a certain way and I'll be using the device. Maybe I'll go from cover display to internal screen or back and forth, whatever it might be, and they will just reset. A lot of the time they want to go to the bright colors or whatever. They're just going to change the colors that I have selected. Again, that's annoying. Another one I've seen a few times now is when I'm in just a random application. For some reason, my taskbar down here will just be up here in the middle of the screen. I can go home and then whenever I go back into the app, it's corrected, but just that's kind of what I'm getting at, right? There's just this overall level of sort of jankiness that I don't think should be there. There's also some jankiness in the animations and maybe the inconsistent way with which they play. When you're on a Samsung device or a Pixel device, all of your widgets, all of your applications, I misclicked there, they'll come in and out of the widget, of the icon. You can see how it zooms out of the icon or out of the widget and back into the widget. On these OnePlus devices, that's not always the case. It's going to zoom out of the widget, but it's going to zoom back into just the middle of the screen. There's just this overall lack of polish that I think is a little bit of a problem. Not a deal breaker, just a little bit annoying. Now, something else that has been kind of in that same category of not a deal breaker, but a little bit annoying, I think would be the way that the device has been updated or maybe the way that it hadn't been updated. But as you can see now, Oxygen OS 14, some of this has been somewhat alleviated. We finally got Android 14 and we actually got an update past Android 14 as well, 14.00600 is the build I'm on now. They are really sort of accelerating a bit now. They've got 14 out fine. It was late, but it got here. And then less than a month later, maybe about a month later, they push out another update that delivers quite a few more features. And they are apparently delivering more new features inside their photo gallery application, an AI version of something like Magic Eraser or kind of a mixture between Magic Eraser and Magic Editor full video on that I've already talked about. Maybe I'll drop it in the description if I can remember to, but it seems like they're getting a little bit better with their update schedule. So that's something positive. Something else that's very positive to me is how it handles multitasking. I think it gets a lot of stuff right and has a lot of really novel ideas. But again, there are those rough edges. If we fire up another app, we'll just jump back into threads. I adore the fact that I can take two fingers and swipe down the middle of the screen like that, it's going to part like the Red Sea, and you're going to see your home screen. And that's how you're going to, if you want to, you can also just drag up from your taskbar or use the sidebar if you want to enable that, like on Samsung devices. You can just see your home screen. And what I love about that is, like most people, I could probably launch these apps with my eyes closed because I have that muscle memory. So two fingers swipe down, home screen. And then from there, you can just pick on an application and it's going to fire it up. That looked a little bit laggy, but trust me, it's not laggy. This is just the way I'm capturing the device. It's very smooth otherwise. So we now have these two applications side by side, and there's a lot you can do here. You can grab your handle and you can resize them, and that's really cool. You can click on this handle. You can save them as an app group, which is the same thing as an app pair. You can swap sides and you can do a top bottom split. And if I do the top bottom split, you'll notice something very different about this version of multitasking. I can only see the Google Play Store, but if I click up here, there's Threads, it's there. Now, Threads is actually collapsed like a traditional top-bottom split would have been, but the Play Store is not, and this sort of underlines a problem. They've not fleshed this thing out as far as they should have. This should be able to be collapsed. So let's go back up here to threads. We're going to click on our handle. We can expand it. And this is open canvas, right? Where you can switch back and forth. And this is awesome because you've got multitasking really quickly moving between applications. But if you want to have both apps on the screen simultaneously, you can't always do that because not all apps are capable of doing this. OnePlus needs to find some override to make all applications be resizable. Now, what's strange is that sometimes this is true when you're in the left-right split as well. There are some applications that won't want to compress themselves, unlike on Pixels, unlike on Samsung devices. You can go into your developer options and change a setting, and that fixes that, 
but it doesn't fix it for top bottom split. If I can remember, I'll drop that link in the description as well. So just some weirdness going on with this, but let's continue with the positive stuff because you can go beyond just having two applications. You can actually grab a third and depending upon the app, you can drag it up here. If you put it in the middle, it should be a floating window. Now YouTube, for whatever reason, is not allowed to be a floating window. So you can just replace either side or you can bring it down here and have it be a third open application. You can see now threads has kind of gone off to one side. If you touch over here, it slides over and this is quite useful. I've actually used this many different times where I've had three different applications. I'm sort of triaging between, but what I really like to do with this is to expand an application, right? So let's grab this handle up here and let's expand the Play Store. So now you have it pretty much full screen and then a traditional side-by-side -side split of these two apps above. And you can also grab these and expand them as well. So you can have this really customized, unique canvas approach Let's expand YouTube also. How cool is this? Like this is such a novel, interesting way to use your device that I have to give them a lot of credit for this, even if it doesn't work quite the way that you would want it to work. There are just some weird hitches to this operating system. Let's talk about the fact that when it comes to your home screen, this is basically treated as two different pages, right? So you can't do the Samsung thing where the inner screen and outer screen have a totally different layout. This is one page, this is the other page, and you can only have four rows of icons. You may be saying, Shane, you clearly have six rows of icons. No, these are actually expanded folders. That's been my workaround. The grid is only four side by side like that. You can't go any further and that's really annoying. If you look at your taskbar down here, you can only have four icons in your taskbar. There are just these weird little decisions that they've made that I feel like hold it back. It's otherwise really quite excellent. There's just quite a few of these little things that drive me a little bit crazy. Now, something that doesn't drive me a little bit crazy about the OnePlus Open is gonna be the battery life and the charging. I've said many times my Pixel Fold gets me four, five, six hours of screen on time in a day, and it does just fine. The OnePlus Open is closer to like five, six, seven, even sometimes eight hours in a day, so that's definitely nice, but the thing that puts it way over the top for me is the charging speed because it's 67 watts. It's so fast that the battery life is almost irrelevant to me because you can put it on your charger and be fully charged or at least have enough to get you through the rest of the day in a couple of minutes. I have a Super VOOC compatible car charger as well. So if I'm out and about and I look and my phone's at 20% battery and I'm going from one place to the other, I plug it in in my car and by the time I'm to my next stop, wherever it might be, 10, 15 minutes later, I'm probably at like 75% battery. So it's like I said, the battery life's good but the charging is so fast, it almost doesn't even matter that the battery life is good because you can top it off so quickly. Now, yes, there is no wireless charging and that is annoying. I love dropping my Pixel Fold onto the Pixel Stand and I switch my SIM back and forth all the time with these devices. My SIM's in my Open, then my SIM's in my Fold. And the most annoying part of that is I have to take my Pixel Stand that is here and there's one next to my bedside and I have to unplug it and plug it back in and unplug it and plug it back in dependent upon what device my SIM is in, which like I said, it changes almost every other day at this point. So it's frustrating, but I can overlook it because the charging speed wired is ridiculous. One more small thing that I almost forgot to mention about the OnePlus Open is the fact that I've had some weird little issues with connectivity. Now they seem to only be for me something that started once I moved to a router that would do Wi-Fi 7. About once a day, I just won't have anything loading anymore and I have to turn my Wi-Fi off, turn it back on, and then everything is okay. It's the only device I've had this issue with, but it's something that's gone on there in terms of like normal mobile cellular connectivity. The modem seems to be just fine in my experience. I've not had any real issues, if anything. It seems to have a bit better connectivity and speed, more consistency than my Pixel Fold. But like I said, if you have Wi-Fi 7, most of you probably don't because it's really, really new. 
we might have some issues there. So where does all of that leave us? It leaves us with a device that has outstanding hardware, and we're talking about the screens, the hinge, just the overall build quality from my experience so far. It seems to be relatively durable. It has great speakers. It has phenomenal charging speed and what I would consider great battery life. It has maybe probably the best overall camera setup on a foldable device with a few little weaknesses here and there, but those have been somewhat addressed overall. Performance is fantastic. Video is fantastic as well. Performance, if you're a gamer, it's got the newest chipset. I'm not a big mobile gamer, but this thing should handle everything you're going to play on it pretty much just fine. Really, the only thing that I think is kind of weak about this device is the overall polish of the software experience, but they also throw in quite a few novel ideas like Open Canvas so that it kind of almost makes it a wash for me. Personally, if this thing was running the Pixel experience wrong, basically, if it was a Pixel or even a Samsung device, I think it would be that much better. I would probably trade Open Canvas for the consistency and just the overall level of polish of a Samsung device or a Pixel device, but you can't necessarily have everything. And this thing has pretty much everything else on lockdown and it's not like the software experience is terrible right like it's got some good things about it there's some things i really like about this device's software there's just a few things i also don't like about it total package though i still think it is the best foldable available right now for most people now samsung's gonna have something to say about that very soon with the z fold 6 but for right now I think the OnePlus Open is still on top. Now, guys, another big factor in this is the fact that right now, brand new, it is still $14.99. That undercuts the competition. For the most part, you will occasionally see the Z Fold 5 and the Pixel Fold now on sale cheaper than the OnePlus Open, but it's pretty much always $14.99, so that is also very, very impressive for such a great device. I'm going to drop affiliate links in the description down below so that if you watch this review and you said you know what the oneplus open is the one for me i'm gonna grab it if you click on my link and make a purchase i'll earn commission off of that purchase guys thanks for watching subscribe for more content just like this and until next time stay nerdy my friends